Hello, after installing Windows Server 2012, I will go through some features and do some different type of configurations on Windows Server 2012. First of all, let's talk about the PowerShell, which is a, a, a command line that allows administrators to configure the user accounts, the network, and other stuff. So you can type any anything you want. Uh, let's say git host. Can. So it's a command line. There's another PowerShell, which is called PowerShell ISE. Uh, power, uh, that stands for PowerShell Integrated uh, Scripting Environment. So if you click on the uh, window icon and in the arrow, if you type PowerShell, you see that Windows PowerShell IEC, click on it. And open in new window. So you, as you see that there are three, there are three screens. One of them is the uh, the console, and the, on the one in the middle is the filing uh, script, filing script or scripting file, and the last one is the mo command module. So the command module helps you uh, to find the the proper command, so you don't basically need to memorize anything. There are different type of modules you can find related to network, uh, users, uh, uh, quality of service, security, and other stuff. So you can search for a certain command. Let's say we type git host, git host, and I can pick the git host. So you can run it immediately and you see it on the power console, or you can insert it and type or even you can copy copy it and paste it on the uh, scripting file uh, there is also you can if you look at the bit transfer you can type get bit transfer you can show the details and if there is any parameters need to be added you can type it here uh, simply you can copy it and paste it here you can type anything you want and you can basically run it on the console you can run an individual or part of the script you see, I can highlight this and uh, execute part of the script. If I need to keep the script, I can save it on the any place and it's called script 02 and I can save it on the desktop. You can see, as you can see, basically I can run it from here. So this is one of the feature of uh, Windows Server 2012. For the remote management, if you go to the server manager, by default the server, uh, the local server, it's uh, by default it's been in uh, the remote management is enabled. But uh, if it's not enabled. There are different ways of enabling it. You can do that by using the power script by typing enable uh, PS remoting. So if you are sure that you want to uh, start the remote management, uh, type A, which means yes to all. Again, type A. now it's been uh, the remote management is active uh, 
you can type from here and you can enable it in the user interface but as I mentioned by default it's been enabled all right so another thing if you would like to add a server for remote management you basically go to dashboard add other servers or manager and you can define the, the, the server or uh, you want to add 015 as you can see I don't have this one so but since it's already been uh, enabled it will it doesn't matter but you can do it this way how you configure the firewall so go to tools and window you click on windows firewall with advanced security if you right click on on the windows firewall uh, with advances secure advanced security and on local computer click on properties you will see that we have first of all three profile domain profile private profiles and public profile so there is an inbound connection and outbound connection you can build a rule or you can define a rule for uh, for that as you can see that you can block the inbound connection or allow it or block some connections so basically there are different type of configuration you can apply you can apply it and it depends on the requirement so if we click on inbound rules you'll see that these are the rules which are available uh, the name of the rule and there's a group of the rule uh, what, what type of profile the rule applies and whether it's enabled or not uh, disabled and what type of uh, address protocol and all this stuff so the the, the rules which they are green that means they are active the one in which are, they are gray they are uh, uh, inactive or disabled if you would like to enable it you just click on enable and it's gonna be like active you just disable it again you can disable it from here for the outbound rules also uh, so if you'd like to add a new rule click on just new rule and define rule type whether it's you want to apply it on a program or port or you can customize it so that you make selection of things so does this rule apply for the program or uh, service or this program path you define it for all program what type of protocol type? let's say we make it tcp and all ports or you can specify a certain port uh, for the remote port also so if you if you notice that you have a local port and remote port so basically you can define which local port uh, this rule applies and which uh, which this rule applies for remote port click on next also we can define the ip address on the local uh, server or uh, and the ip address on the remote uh, host next so what's the rule allow all connection or allow the connection if it's secured or blocked let's make it allow all connection next so you define it whether on the domain on the domain to the corporate domain or private on the private network location or for public network location let's say we apply it for the public and let's call it this is a new rule you can type anything you can type anything finish so this is the rule and now it's active same thing you can do you can activate it or disable it enable it or disable it or you can actually change the settings again and do 
different type of configuration okay so let me just delete this rule yes all right so if you would like to access your server remotely you can enable remote desktop so the easiest way to do that is to go here it's in the folder and right click on this PC properties remote settings and allow remote connect to this computer it's already been enabled and okay close close and if you look at the local server you will see that the remote desktop is even enabled Uh, I forgot to mention something you can also if you go to the properties and to remote settings you can select the users that which will be able to access the server remotely so you can add this called administrator which is already had ha he has strator he has uh, uh, an access okay 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 by this way you give an access privileges to the administrator uh, account one last thing we need to talk about is the resource monitor resource monitor is one of the easy ways to to monitor your resources uh, and to see which services are and how much they consume uh, resources and minerals so if you see that, that this is the, the screen of the monitor resource, resource monitors there is an overview t overview tab cpu tab memory tab uh, for the ram disk and network and if you notice that there are four partitions are available and it shows uh, which service uh, on each partition the services are which are, they are active you can check on a certain service and you notice that on the screen that it will show you the processor usage for these services and also you can see it on the memory or the network or so basically it's one way of uh, monitoring the, the resources and uh, probably it's an easy way to improve the performance of the server that's it for this video and thank you.